More and more photographers are switching over to Affinity Photo and for a good reason. It has everything they need at a fraction of the price, including LUTs. What are LUTs? How do you use them? And can you make your own? Today, we're covering all thing LUTs. I'm Abby Esparza, and I've been doing digital art for about 10 years now. And all the resources featured today can be found over on Envato Elements, where you get unlimited downloads of graphics, photos, and fonts, all with super simple commercial licensing. Plus, a no locking contract means you can cancel anytime. Subscribe now with the link down in the description. So let's start right off with what exactly are LUTs. LUTs, or lookup tables, let you apply color grades to your photos without ever permanently altering the original photo. You can make changes after adding your LUT because the color effect isn't baked into the image. You can also make changes to the LUT layer's settings. This includes things like uh, layer modes and layer opacity. The color grade or color correction being on its own layer offers a whole new level of control and customization. We can combine multiple LUTs at different opacities with different layer modes, which is actually my personal favorite way to create some pretty dramatic color grades. So then let's install and use some LUTs. Luckily, we can choose from thousands, literally thousands of them over on Envato Elements. I really liked this set of 50 dark kind of moody LUTs, but you can find bright and cheery packs or wedding inspired packs. There's a LUT for about every occasion. With them downloaded and placed somewhere on our computer, all we have to do is open our image in Affinity Photo and go ahead and make any base corrections you might need, especially exposure and other settings that affect the image's values or contrast. You want the base edit to be done so that the LUT file can enhance what's already there. So let's choose the adjustment panel and go down to LUT. Here you'll find a few default LUTs, but we want to use our custom ones. So let's select the cog icon and choose import. Navigate to wherever you extracted your downloaded LUT files and select your LUTs. They'll appear in the LUT dropdown and then you can just click to cycle through the different effects. As I mentioned, the LUT is its own layer, so we can reduce the opacity if we want to lessen that LUT effect. We can add a second, third, or fourth plus LUT effect to a mix and match. Like I said, I really like layering LUTs over one another to create some uh, pretty drastic or dramatic color grades. And then, of course, we can always add a layer mask to pinpoint where we want that LUT to be active. A LUT layer is a type of adjustment layer, so you get all the typical layer settings. Now let's make our very own LUT. You construct LUTs using adjustment layers and only adjustment layers. Any edits done to the image itself won't be included in the LUT. You also can't use things like masks, just pure adjustment layers. So with that in mind, let's create a super fun LUT that'll turn any kind of woodsy green colors into a deep reddish magenta color. Think moody fantasy forest. We can start by adding some contrast using a curves adjustment layer with a very slight S curve. An S curve is where you bring down the shadows and brighten up those highlights. We want to be pretty subtle with this. Next, let's change those greens into red. We'll need a HSL shift adjustment layer. Then we're going to go into the greens by clicking the green dot icon here and set the settings to 84.7, negative nine. And then we'll keep the lightness at zero. Now we're going to use the rainbow gradient sliders to pinpoint the shades of green being selected. We're going to pull on this line here where the points sit to get the bulk of the color. Then we'll use the individual points to hone in on the shades of green. Not all the green will end up being selected because there are a lot of yellow tones here. So don't worry about them for now. Just get the bulk of the green to be that reddish magenta color. Also, be careful that the skin tone isn't being turned into any odd colors and that there are no weird, abrupt color changes in the environment. We want everything nice and smooth and almost natural feeling. 
This is a super visual process, just adjust the sliders till you feel everything looks pretty okay. Once things are looking good, we want to do the same thing only to the yellows. Setting the yellow settings to 72.3 degrees for the hue, a negative 16% for saturation, and then again keeping the lightness at zero. Again, we want to use these points on the rainbow gradient to pinpoint what shades of yellow are being selected, adjusting the yellow tones to be a similar shade that complements the color we turned the greens to. You might have to go back into those greens and make some adjustments. It can be a back and forth process. Also, feel free to adjust the hue and saturation settings. Those weren't magic numbers. You can absolutely fine tune them to your specific needs and images. So this is looking pretty good. Let's finish off the adjustment layers with one more curves layer, going into the blues and pulling the blues into the shadows while bringing the blues away or down from those highlights. This will give it a slight yellow tone. And of course, bring blues into the shadows of the image. Now, before making this into a LUT, you can test the effect by dragging and dropping these layer adjustments onto a few different images just to see how they look. Then if you need to make any changes to the adjustments, you can. These are looking pretty good, so let's make our LUT. All we have to do is go to File, Export LUT. Let's name our file here. Then let's look at the default preview image. Super cute cat, but we can swap it out for something else, maybe something more appropriate. But in this case, it's unnecessary since we already did our tests. I find dragging and dropping the adjustment layers onto different photos all at once a bit easier than loading in different preview images, uh, but the option is there if you need it. Let's take a look at the format. More likely than not, the best option to choose here is going to be the default, which is a .cube file. You can use .cube files across various pieces of software, including Photoshop Lightroom and even most of video editing software. So it's going to be your go-to most of the time. Now let's look at quality. Uh, quality is a tricky one because if we jack this bad boy all the way up to uh, maximum quality, not only will the size of the LUT be huge, but the processing power required to apply it will be, um, significant. 64 by 64 by 64 seems to be the sweet spot. Good quality at a more manageable size. Then we can just hit export, save the LUT in our desired location, and load it up just like our pre-mades. A quick recap, let's go into the adjustment options, look for LUT, Click the cog icon next to LUT and choose Import. Navigate to where you saved that LUT and select it, then scroll down to the LUT adjustment menu to find and use it. And that's how to use and make LUTs in Affinity Photo. LUTs are great not just for super dramatic effects, kind of like this one, but also for more subtle color correction. But however you choose to use them, LUTs are one of my all-time favorite color grading tools. So if you aren't already using them, I definitely think now is a great time to start. But if that wasn't enough and you're looking to learn even more, why not check out some of the other videos that Envato Touch Plus has to offer. If you liked this video, consider giving us a like and even subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of all new videos, including tips, tricks, and of course, tutorials. Happy designing, see you next time.